HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for business and entrepreneurs. Uh, everything from sales, social media, legal, accounting, taxes, uh, leadership, uh, you name it. If it is something that has to do with being more successful in business, we have had a guest or we are having a guest on who's going to be talking about that. And today we actually have uh, such an incredible guest. Uh, today we have with us Dan Cooper. Dan is the co-author of a new book, Sharpen, a guidebook for business ownership and adventures in leadership. He is also the co-founder of Acumen, a Kansas City area organization that exists to give business leaders and owners a safe place to discuss their issues and find answers. Thanks so much for joining me today, Dan. Thanks, Diane. Looking forward to it. Me too. And today we're going to be talking about a fascinating subject, which is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And I'm fascinated by this topic because I think a lot of times people um, mix them up and, and don't really realize that there is a difference. So you, you talk about three mental models. Um, and so I'm wondering if we can just start in with, actually, my first question is, 
why does it matter that there's a difference in business between knowledge and wisdom? Sure. So what's great about business is we always have to be learning. And all the old adages are true, right? Uh, leaders are readers and um, the pace of business now is so fast that we have to keep up with it. And that's why podcasts and uh, articles and blogs are, are great because it allows us to do that. Um, the challenge is, is are we just ingesting content and are we figuring out what are we getting um, while we're learning? And so there's, in my mind, two modes. One is knowledge. This is everything you need to do your job. This is the stuff that changes day to day, um, how the market changes. This is how you keep up to date on all things in your vertical and uh, all the things you, you need to learn in order to be great. Then there's wisdom. Wisdom is things that are always true. They've always been true. They always will be true. And wisdom comes through experience, but it also comes through uh, learning as well. So there's wisdom of your own particular business, uh, having spent 20 years in construction, you just know stuff that's true and it's always been true and it always will be. Um, but then there's knowledge that you have to acquire as new technologies come out or um, shifts in the market take uh, precedent. So uh, that's the biggest difference between the two. That's so interesting. Okay, okay. So three models, let's start with the first one and just start going through. So let me walk you through how I got to this wisdom thing. Great. Um, you know, we talk to a lot of business leaders and a lot of times we're trying to come up with answers and usually each leader has a couple of different books or frameworks that they use to help them set up decision making, kind of a core to their being of like, okay, when I have a problem, here's where I start. And one of the books that kept coming up over and over again is the book of Proverbs. It's written by Solomon, who at the time was the richest, wisest person on the earth. I think if you do the math correctly, it's about $25 billion in revenue year over year. And so he wrote this great book that has all these just adages and um, two-liners that when you hear them, you're like, that's just true. And so when you look at wisdom, um, it's things that last a long time that are always true. I saw in your background uh, that uh, you are Dale Carnegie certified back mm -hmm. earlier in your career. And one of my favorite books is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Ah, me too. It was it was published in 1936, <laughs> and so that's 75 years old. So how do books like that last that long? Well, it's because it's full of truth. And so same thing in Proverbs. Um, the other thing that's happening is we are all so busy with so much information, um, and there's a bit of sexiness to trying to come up with something new. And one of my favorite quotes is by the other half of Berkshire Hathaway, Charlie Munger. And he said that it's remarkable how much long-term advantage people like us have gotten trying to be consistently not stupid instead of trying to be very intelligent. <laughs> and so we're running around crazy. Uh, and a lot of times we just don't take time to think and that's where wisdom comes in. So where are these principles that are true over time that can help kind of set us straight and lead us um, when we're having hard decisions that are full of emotion and lots of detail and complexity? So that's the setup is Proverbs is one book in a series of all sorts of books we can choose. Um, but for Sharpen, uh, that was the one that had come up. So we did a research project and we went through and we took all of the Proverbs and we put them into buckets with a lens of leadership. And you started to see trends and themes over all of these things. So that's where um, you take old ideas and then you have to find 
new models that fit the truth. And so that's what we've done. And it's a great way to start thinking about what frameworks do you hold on to? And then how can you find new tools and methods um, that fit that old truth? Make sense? It does. It, it makes a lot of sense. I want to learn more about this taking old wisdom and creating new tools and, you know, sure. Like, you know, okay, so it makes sense to me. And how do people apply this then? All right. So let's start with that first model. Okay. We all have to make big decisions. Um, and what we have found is deciding what to do is the new hard. Um, how to do it, it's actually pretty easy. We're all professionals at that. There's the internet. Google actually is a wonderful how finder. And no matter what you're doing in business, uh, you will try to figure out how or you'll try 10 different ways. But deciding on which direction you're going, what am I going to do is super important. So um, one of the proverbs is, uh, wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod is for the back of the one who has no sense. And so the key is there, the lips of the discerning. We need to be discerning. Um, we need to take time to think. Another one is the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but the fool uh, has folly and deception. So we need to be discerning. We need to give thought to our ways. So much time is we just go left and we go right uh, and we go fast. So here is a really simple model that you can quickly discern and give thought to your ways. Um, it's actually from Susie Welch, who made it popular, and it's called 10-10-10. Um, a lot of times, um, there's a lot of emotion in decision making. And so the 10-10-10 is basically puts a time frame on how you would live with your decision. So uh, as you look at something, you'd say, okay, how will I feel about it in 10 days? How will I feel about it in 10 months? And how will I feel about it in 10 years? Hmm. So we're writing this book and we were up against a deadline. And one of the options was to push uh, it back in order to um, finish up some stuff to uh, really make it a hardback versus a paperback. We had all this stuff and we could have pushed it out quickly. And so we, we use 10, 10, 10. So in 10 months, will we care if we pushed our deadline back six months? Eh, 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 maybe. And how about in 10 years? Well, no, in 10 years, I'm going to want to have something I'm really proud of that we put out the best product we could. And so by putting it in a time delineation um, and then looking out into the future, it took away a lot of the like, ah, oh, but, but we need to get it out. We promised people that it would be out in the spring and now it's going to be out in the fall. And it, it made it much simpler. The second piece of 10, 10, 10 is then a value driver. So not only do we have time, but we also have values. Would I make this decision 10 times? Would I make it a hundred times? And would I make it a thousand times? So there are times when, you know what? Eight out of 10 times I might do that. Or you know what? Two out of 10 times I would do that. And it's a quick way to look at yourself and your values and see if do those align and how, how much? Is it 50%? Is it 80%? So that is, uh, that is 10, 10, 10. That, that, uh, it's so interesting to me because it, I, I feel like what happens is people don't take any of the time to stop and think in a discerning way about the impact of the decisions that they're going to make, which is part of the reason why they can't make the decision. Because they just don't, you know, step out and go, okay, hang on a second. The other thing we see, so one is, um, you literally uh, a paralysis. They don't yeah. want to make a decision. Um, the other side is they make it so quick um, that they're disappointed in the decision. So remember, we're just trying not to be stupid. You'd be amazed yeah. at how, how successful we can have by just locking and tackling um, and having a good game. Yeah, yeah. 
it's the so that that is fascinating to me okay I, i'm going to take a quick sponsor break so then i don't have to worry about it from there so sure. hang on sure a second accelerate your business growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information they have over 150,000 titles to choose from and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash business growth, you get one free audiobook and a one month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller and The Ultimate Sale by Justin Goodbread. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Dan Cooper about the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Okay. So I love this whole concept of we're just trying not to do, you know, uh, be stupid, make, make stupid decisions. Uh, Cause it does, I, I think that's a little more liberating, a little, easier to digest than I just don't, uh, I, I have to be brilliant. You know, I have to make all the best decisions. Well, and what we found is when you're doing the, um, the, the simple stuff, the blocking and tackling, the, you're putting in the effort, the opportunities show up for the big catalyst and driver to change your business. Um, so instead of trying to create it out of nothing, mm -hmm. and listen, there's times for that, right? There, there's times where innovation is totally there. But in the daily grind, um, you're trying to create opportunities through the good work you do uh, versus trying to make it up every day and be so awesome. Uh, I, your word liberating is, is a great word. It gives you the option and opportunity to do great work and then jump on opportunities when uh, they show up. Right. So I have a question for you that, that I've been sort of struggling with, and I'm, I'm just curious about your viewpoint. We went through this, this period, I'm not sure we're out of it, but I know we, we were in it, about you have to be disruptive. You have to you know, be disrupting in order to be relevant. And I struggle so much with that for so many reasons i think it puts way too much pressure on people who really are doing great things because it, it sort of shifts their mindset to okay i i it has to be a volcano um so and it feels to me like part of what you are talking about is making um reasoned decisions that positively impact your business and not necessarily going with the latest uh, craze for lack of a better word sure so it's funny uh so i i call that the sexy show right disruption innovation <laughs> creativity like and and then you see faces of elon musk and uh you know just all of these visionaries and um except yeah. i run a construction company or right. i run an an ac company or uh, i have a service-based company and there are places where that should be your core and then i think there's about 90 percent of the rest of the world um where it is uh it is good business it is fun business it's exciting business uh but it doesn't have to be VC backed and invested in. And um, so yeah. do you need to disrupt? Sure, but what is disruption? Is disruption um, adding a new service, right? Uh, and then you need to be very diligent about what service you might add. So let's take the, the AC uh, and the heating and plumbing uh, company, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they add water filtration well, that's disruptive. They, they added something like that they could offer their customers that another uh, heating and plumbing company hasn't done so far. Um, now, did they create an entirely new market category? No. So I, I think there are levels mm -hmm. of disruption and it needs to be within your circle 
of competence. Uh, there's, you know, the thought that um, we get out over our skis so often when we get out of our circle of competence because we think we need to add something so disruptive. Yeah. Um, but if, if I know a lot about something, why don't I tack something on that's within the, my sphere or a little bit outside it, um, but it makes sense versus, hey, we're going to make a left turn and we went from a marketing agency to, I don't know, in a certain something silly there. Now we're, uh, <laughs> so I, I think a lot of times people are like, well, we do heating and plumbing today, but we're going to turn into a sanitation company. And you're like, right. what? Yeah. <laughs> what? No. Okay. What, you know, take two steps. And the other part of disruption is uh, I think the market moves a lot slower than the news cycle does. Ah, and so, yeah. So you can be too disruptive. And I've been on, I've been in the uh, too fast to market problem. Uh, so I, I think we could all slow down a little bit uh, yeah. and create a lot more healthier, profitable uh, businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. I, I really, I appreciate that a lot because, and, and I think the listeners will too, because I just feel like we're in this weird place where the messaging is um, it conflicts with the vast majority of small businesses that are out there and, and where they should be focusing their energy and, and whatnot. So um, thank you for that. So uh, model number two. Yeah. So number two is WW blank D. Now I know everyone's ears just raised up because what does that make you think yeah. of? Well, it makes, makes you think of the bracelet, doesn't it? Sure. WWJD. And of course, everybody's like, oh, it's about to get awkward. The guy's going to say Jesus. <laughs> um, but here's the thing is that actually is a really good model. And we do it all the time, even if we don't yeah. think about it. So I heard it once. I've heard it a thousand times. Uh, I just want to create a mini Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, yeah, don't we all? Uh, don't we all want yeah. to do what Warren Buffett did? Like, wouldn't we all want to take a couple of companies and blow them up and have cash that just compounds all of them? Um, what they're really saying is, what would Warren do? And mm. then who I am and where I am in the market and the time and the place, how would I do it? And so really this WW blank D concept is when you're in a challenge, you can take someone else's skill set, values, and um, strengths and try it on as, you know, a pair of glasses and say, okay, how would they look at this problem? This happens a lot when there was a super strong founder and you're the next person up in line. This happens a lot when uh, a lot of times uh, family members, you well, my dad would have. Okay, so that's a lens. And it's a fabulous way to quickly go through a challenge and look at it with, perhaps, I'm not a finance person. So who's a finance person that I know and how might they think through this problem? And it's a really quick way to get out of your own head and use someone else's wisdom um, and start tackling a problem. That is great. Wow. So a couple, I, I, that, couple, yeah, boy, go ahead. A couple of challenges there. Um, you're still you. So you have to mm -hmm. put it through a filter. It, it's it's a really hard when you have to, uh, when you think you should do exactly what that person should. They were born in a different time. They have different backgrounds and experiences. So you still need to put it through your filter. Uh, but it is a wonderful mm -hmm. way to step step out uh, of it. So you just need to watch for that one kind of yellow flag. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Wow. It, it's, it's, um, there's so many things I like about this is, is it's so relatable, you know, like I'm listening to it and I'm thinking, yeah, totally get it. Could see how I could implement that. Could see how that could help me. So I can see the listeners doing that and, and it's easy to absorb. It doesn't feel like it's something that 
it is is like a where you have to make a big shift to another way of thinking or another mindset. It's it's funny when you're sitting across, um, you know, in a in a coaching session or you're you're talking to a group of entrepreneurs or business people. Um, the main thing they just talk about is time and complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, you should fill out a three page form to talk about how you're going to make your decision and their eyes glaze over and they're literally <laughs> like, listen, I'm never going to do that. Like, I know I should, it would make me a better leader. Guess what? I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And so a lot of these models are for, okay, how can you then maybe take 30 seconds, take three minutes, take a, a meeting uh, with everyone brainstorming and think in a different way. So it's, it's a quick hit, but it's also extremely impactful knowing that they're not going to always fill out the, the giant reports that they should to help them uh, come to a final decision. I so relate to that. I, I think that is a critically important thing. And, and I've noticed that there are um, systems out there or programs out there that are so complex that I, I know for me, I stop and I think, okay, no, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It'll be an exercise routine if there's, or, or a yeah. diet, whatever. If there's too much to it, if I have to read too much, think too much, change too much, I can't slow down that much to, to, to you know, find the headspace to be able to do that. Isn't that funny how we're all, uh, ADD now, and I guess yeah. there's, some, there's some weird correlation to um, leadership and ADD. I don't know what it is. I have no scientific evidence to back it up, other than um, the the more I hang out with leaders, the more it's like squirrel. You it's know, like, it's so it's, true. It's, a absolutely. I can't tell you how, sure. how many people will say to me, I, I think I have ADD, and I say to them, yeah, we all do. <laughs> Move on. You know, it's just this is a it's, thing. So it's what are we going to do about it with it? Like how right. do we use that to our ad advantage? Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, you just you got to accept it. Fighting against it ain't going to change it, right? So how do you make the best of it? Exactly. Oh, it's really great. Okay. So is there anything else about? Uh, model two, or should we move on to three? Let's move on to three. Okay. So this is called Fetch. Um, it's called it actually fetch? comes from Fetch from Dr. Okay. John Townsend. Um, this is about frustration elimination. 98% uh, of all problems that we talk to leaders about are people problems. Yes. People. Uh, we're all messy, we're all broken in our own special way, and yet um, we can do amazing things if we're led right. And so the proverb is, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. And the point is, hey, leaders, stop avoiding it. Stop kicking the can. <laughs> stop being okay with your, your C player. Um, because if you discipline your children, there's hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. And death is a, is a big ominous word. But what we're saying is, hey, if you fire them, it's on you a lot of the time. And so how do we have these high stakes conversations that eliminate these frustration and yet do it in a healthy way? There's so much um, challenge in telling truth and yet doing it with grace at the same time. Like, how do I be hard on the issue, and soft on the person? Easy to say, yeah. hard to do. Yeah. So that is what fetch is. It's eight steps. And I'll try to go through it uh, in a fairly quick way. Um, and I'll give you a link at the end that everybody can go download it in, um, in more detail. Okay. And so... Here's how the process goes. You got to let them know you are for them. Hey, I'm really glad uh, that you're here. And then number two is state the problem. But you don't show up till nine, three days a week. We're supposed to be here at eight. And then you have to own your part. And this is the humble 
um, challenge in leaders is a lot of times we don't want to look in the mirror and say, where are we in this problem? Mm. And so I've let this go on for three months. I should have said something after the first week. I've let it go. Uh, that's, that's on me. I'm sorry. Um, but something's got to change. And then you have to be quiet. <laughs> what do you think? And hear their side. Hey, why don't you share your perspective? And then here's what's going to happen. They're going to they're going to start to shuck and dive and tell you the reason. They're going to go down a rabbit hole. Um, and then there's five magic words to deal with that diversion. Let me get back to. Like, that's great. Oh, actually, it's your problem and you're a terrible boss. Oh, okay. Well, let me get back to. And then here's where the preparation starts. You have to know what you want specifically. You have to be able to ask for it. And that's one of the challenges as leaders. A lot of times we see the problem, we just walk over there, we start having a confrontation. We haven't thought about it at all. We have no idea. We're just going to huh. wheel and deal and hope that we come out. So what do you want specifically? I need you to show up at 8 o'clock, five days in a row from here on out. And then number six is give consequences huh. if needed. So what are the consequences if not? Hey, we're going to have to cut your hours. Uh, it, it could be uh, I'll have to put you on a 90-day plan. It could be listen, or your employment here will be terminated. Um, and there's all sorts of, of ranges where that is. And then at the end, you got to put a, a wrapper on it. Hey, I'm for you. We're glad you're here, um, and I want you here. And you go on. And then the final step, and here's where – a lot of us fall down, me included, is you got to check back in 24 hours. So what happened is you spent a day or two days or 10 days thinking about this challenge. You went, you hit them, and you did it. You had a very good process. Uh, they went and slept on it, and they probably have thoughts. So after you go through all that hard stuff, you come back in 24 hours and say, okay, how are you doing? Any feedback? And you'd be amazed at the amount of really healthy conversations uh, that you have um, when you follow. That is fantastic. I'll be honest, this, is, this might be the single uh, most um, profitable tool I've ever seen used out in in the market um, and everybody has their, you know, their process. This one, uh, just having seen um, uh, seven figure turnarounds in uh, salespeople, uh, entire executive teams that have figured out how to work to, with each other because of this uh, process. It's, it's really simple and really powerful. Oh my gosh. I, I just, I love it on so many levels. It's so true that this thing goes on every single day, all day long in companies all over the world. And it, it's this massive avoidance thing. And I, I just, like every step of that is so great. I especially love the follow up in 24 hours because they've had time to think about it. I, I, that never would have occurred to me, but that's great because it, it, it solidifies it. Um, and, Let's them come to the table and be part of the conversation around the solution. Well, and here'd be my challenge to leaders. Uh, currently, right now, we have a, a, a talent challenge. It is hard to find good talent. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out how to keep the talent you have and raise the talent you have. And I hold more accountable the talent you have. Mm -hmm. um, it's way cheaper to keep them than it is to go find it. And yes, right. sometimes you should promote someone to uh, a, a possible guest or promote them to uh, the, open them up to the market um, and let them go. <laughs> but it's really, really good when you don't. Um, when you save somebody and you save the relationship, um, the loyalty and just the uh, ferocity of which you can tackle the market. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, boy. Oh, this is, this is just so great. I, I love this entire conversation. There is so much good information here and tactical 
boy, I, I just, incredible. So is there, so, so what have we not talked about, if anything? I mean, I, I don't want you to go into the whole book because I want people to buy it, but, um, sure, sure. you know, but, I, but then I don't want to leave us with there's something that else you want to share that I didn't ask you about. How are we doing on time? Um, I think we're doing pretty good. All right. And I got one more for you Great. that I'll throw in. Um, what ship always sinks? What ship always or, sinks? The one with the hole in it? <laughs> a partnership. <laughs> a, a partnership. <laughs> yeah. I guess you did not. You did. <laughs> and so, so true. Ugh, yeah. Um, so in our marriages, uh, we fight together, uh, we grow together, um, and there are lots of things that keep us in our partnerships. Although there's a lot that keeps us together, there's also so much that drives us apart. So I had a partnership divorce. I had um, two gentlemen were, uh, they were older, we were at different uh, parts of our lives. One got a, uh, an actual divorce in the midst of our, our company. And after 10 years, we had just grown apart. I wanted to grow. They wanted to retire and, and invest and, and put money in their pocket. And what's funny is going through it, it was very gnashing of teeth and, um, and hard. Coming out the other side, when I start to tell my story, almost every partner Someone who's been in a partnership is, oh, let me tell you my story. <laughs> so there are lots of people that have scars and battle wounds from all yeah. their partnerships. And I think it's time to be better about choosing our partners. Ooh. And so there's got to be a way. Because usually it's due to opportunity. Ooh, you have this skill. I have yeah. this skill. We've been friends. Let's go jump. Like, let, let's go do this thing. And there there needs to be more intention in how we choose our partners. So there's a proverb, uh, proverb 31. Um, and it is the wife of noble character. And it's, it, when as Solomon writes it, it's an homage to his mom. He's basically saying, man, this is what um, uh, someone I look up to should act like. And if, you go through that and challenge your listeners to go, just go Google Proverbs 31 and, and put wife of noble character in there. This is what a partner is. And it's like, this person will invest in their fields and they'll, you know, uh, make sure that the people are okay. And just as you go through it, you're like, golly, who is this wonderful person? <laughs> and yet at the end, you see, it's all about trust. He completely oh. trusts her. And so, we need to figure out how to get to a trust level with our partners before they become partners. Um, how do you date just like you would in your marriage? How do you see if you're compatible with each other? Uh, there's always going to be arguments and fights and challenges and stuff, but you're going to need to be able to work through it. And this is the one thing in business that what got you here will get you there. However, your relationship started, usually it started with, you know, the excitement and lots of meetings and you spent lots of time together and you talked about everything. And just over the years in business, you get busy. You're not even in the same meetings anymore. You don't go play golf. You don't eat, you don't drink a beer on Friday afternoons and just dream. Um, and mm -hmm. 10 years later, you end up getting a divorce. So my challenge is it's time to pick partners well and do it intentionally. Wow, such a bonus. I, I love that. And, and people do rush in. Uh, it's, it's interesting um, when you say, you know, it's like dating and marriage. I always say to people that um, prospecting and sales is like dating. You're gonna be Ooh, married yeah. to that customer, so you better make sure you know them and that you wanna be in that relationship with them before you go through it, because that's how you avoid having bad customers. So really all of these, when we're interacting with other people and we need them as an integral part of our business to help us grow, we 
owe it to ourselves and to them to make sure that we are fighting battles together and um, growing together and exploring together and all of those things instead of the, the sort of surface relationship that a lot of people have before they realize it's too late and now they're in a partnership that's awful. Well, and your point is, is super solid about sales. Goodness gracious, how often is uh, my number staring at me, my sales manager or my sales leader staring at me where I'm starting to think that um, a bad customer is okay uh -huh. because it, it saves me somewhere else. Um, goodness gracious, that analogy works everywhere. And so it's the patience to have the right customer. Um, and it's the patience to have uh, the right partner. That right. goodness, we could take that, take that everywhere. Right, right, yeah. It's really meaningful. And and interestingly, I feel like we're circling back to the beginning with having the patience and taking the time. Right. We talked mm -hmm. about that at the beginning of the conversation about being discerning and and making these decisions, you know, really thinking about the, the whole 10, 10, 10 thing, sitting down and thinking about it before you make the decision, because it'll help you make better decisions. Just saying. You got it. Yeah, boy, I love this. Okay, Dan, th this is so great. I so appreciate this conversation. Tell the listeners, if you would, please, how they can find the book. Uh, tell them about Acumen, you know, what you've got going on, please. Sure. Uh, you can find our book, Sharpen, at sharpenbook.com. Uh, the website for our company is acumenimpact.com. And if you want to download any of the tools and some of the resources we talked about today, you can go to acumenimpact.com forward slash resources. Uh, Acumen exists to sharpen, challenge, and inspire CEOs and uh, owners of companies. Uh, we do that through community and through coaching uh, and through um, uh, networking and events. So uh, that's what we do. And our goal is to uh, challenge people's impact and influence in the marketplace. Because when you have a company, you never have a bigger platform to change the world than you do right now. I love that. That is so great. I, I thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate this conversation. Uh, and listeners, boy, th this has been fabulous. Um, so much rich content here. This is one of the ones that you listen to more than once uh, to make sure that you uh, get everything you can out of it. Uh, and I would like to thank our sponsor, audible.com, to get a free trial of audible.com as well as a free audiobook go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And now I'm going to say patient. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Welcome change agents to your go-to place for stories that ignite your spirit, fuel your purpose and connect us all. We believe in the incredible power of the human spirit, its boundless resilience, and the inspiration it brings to our lives. On the Driving Change Podcast, we'll journey together through the extraordinary, yet very relatable experiences of some of the most amazing people on earth. Our mission? That through these stories, we might just spark change within you and awaken a newfound motivation to harness your unique gifts to make a real difference in the world. So get ready to be inspired and join us on this incredible adventure. You can find the Driving Change Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you love listening to your favorite podcasts.